prosecutor who was a very tough prosecutor, they got rid of him. Now they're trying to make it the opposite way, but they got rid. So if I were the president, I would certainly recommend that of you, Brent. I haven't, but uh, it's certainly something we can start thinking about because I'm sure that President Xi does not like being under that, that kind of scrutiny where billions of dollars is taken out of his country by a guy that just got kicked out of the Navy. He got kicked out of the Navy. All of a sudden, he's getting billions of dollars. You know what they call that? They call that a payoff. Well, I leave that to the lawyers. I can't say, though, that Schiff has now been proven to be a liar. We've known it for three years because they've been trying to impeach for three years. Uh, he's a liar. He's a stone-cold liar. So I leave that to the lawyers. That's up to them to decide. But the whole investigation is crumbling. Yeah. I can. Yeah, I can. I can. Well, we have a real problem. We've been hitting the Taliban very, very hard. And as far as I'm concerned, they still haven't recovered from killing 12 people. One of happened to be a great American soldier from Puerto Rico. Uh, they still have not recovered, and they probably never will. No, but I read Mitch McConnell's statement yesterday, and he read my phone call, and as you know, he put out a statement that said that was the most innocent phone call he's read. And I spoke to him about it, too. He read my phone call with the president of Ukraine, Mitch McConnell. He said, that was the most innocent phone call that I've read. I mean, give me a break. Anybody that reads it says the same thing. And the only people that don't understand it is when they look at the false, fabricated, fraudulent statement made by Shifty Schiff. Well, I think Biden is uh, going down, and I think his whole situation, because now you may very well find that there are many other countries that they scam, just like they scam China and Ukraine, and basically, who are they really scamming? the USA, and it's not good. And that's probably why China, for so many years, has had a sweetheart deal where China rips off the USA because they deal like people with Biden where they give the son a billion and a half dollars, and that's probably why China has such a sweetheart deal that for so many years they've been ripping off our country. We're looking at it. We're looking at it very closely. It's under study. We'll see. They want to talk, and we'll be talking to them soon. We'll see. So I'm going to, uh, yes? I heard very bad things about her. And I don't know if I recalled her or somebody recalled her, but I heard very, very bad things about it for a long period of time. Not good. Thank you. I'll see you in Florida. I'll see you all in Florida. President Trump now boarding Marine One. He is now preparing to board Air Force One. He's actually getting on board his plane, as you can see, turning around and waving before taking off for that trip to Florida later this afternoon. And what you just heard from him was significant for several reasons. The president speaking with reporters for just about seven minutes. One, as a contributor to this network, Sam Stein points out, President Trump is publicly suggesting and calling on foreign governments to investigate a political rival at the same time that on Capitol Hill there's an impeachment investigation into whether President Trump called on a foreign leader to investigate a political rival. President Trump also had what you could call his China if you're listening moment, calling on President Xi to investigate what the president uh, is 
alleging are misdeeds by Hunter Biden, the former vice president's son, claims that the campaign has called dismantled conspiracy theories and that have been debunked by independent fact checkers. You also had the president continuing to allege unproven claims about the Bidens, about his family. I want to bring in now Kristen Wilker at the White House. We're also joined by Ambassador Nick Burns again, the former U.S. ambassador to NATO. So there is a lot to unpack there. Um, and Kristen, let me start with you, because we did hear a couple of things from President Trump that we hadn't heard before from him, specifically this call for China to investigate a political rival, which is starkly reminiscent of what we heard from President Trump during the 2016 campaign against a different foreign government or foreign leader, and that was Russia at the time. Right, it was his Russia, if you're listening, moment. And I just want to underscore this point, Hallie, he brought up China unprompted, which makes it all the more significant. We know that this is part of the theory that he and his outside attorney, Rudy Giuliani, have been pushing that there was some wrongdoing uh, with Hunter Biden's business dealings in China. There's never been any evidence of that, but clearly this is something that he's not prepared to let go. Now, did he discuss it? Has he discussed it with President Xi Jinping? He says he has not. But, of course, at the core of this impeachment inquiry is what you just mapped out. Did the president pressure another Another foreign leader to investigate his political rival was there a quid pro quo if not explicit was it implicit that is what lawmakers on Capitol Hill House Democrats are looking into so now they have a new avenue that they're undoubtedly going to be scrutinizing Hallie what if any conversations were had between this administration and Chinese officials about the Bidens if President Trump didn't have this conversation with President Xi Jinping did anyone here have those sorts of conversations so I think those are among the questions that you're going to start to see asked and try to get answered to on Capitol Hill as the investigations continue to ramp up Hallie Kristen, stand by for a second. Ambassador Burns, I want to bring you in on the China piece of this, because here's the context. As President Trump today is standing on the South Lawn, calling on Chinese officials to investigate his political rival's family, in just days from now, top Chinese officials will be uh, working with U.S. negotiators on a massive and critically important trade deal, potentially. Given those two things, the president asking for something from China, Chinese negotiators getting ready to work with the U.S. government on a trade deal. How do you think China is hearing right now what President Trump just said? The Chinese are going to hear this as something that the president deeply wants. Who knows how the Chinese will calculate this in the trade negotiations. China's an authoritarian dictatorship. Let's just reflect on what just happened. The president of the United States is corrupting our democracy. He's calling on one of our great rivals in the world the Chinese regime to investigate President Trump's leading Democratic opponent. He's calling on, he's doubling down in Ukraine and do the same thing. He is spreading outright, outright lies about former Vice President Biden and his son Hunter, and he's denigrating Ambassador Masha Yovanovitch, a highly respected Openly. American ambassador. I've worked for five presidents of both parties. None of them would have come close to what, doing what Donald Trump did today. This is a danger to our democracy. There are laws that prohibit government officials from trying to bring other governments, foreign governments, into our elections. The president did that in his July 25th phone call with President Zelensky. He did it this morning on the interview that you've just shown on MSNBC. It is wrong to do that. It's legally and morally wrong. And there's a reason why the House has to follow through on this impeachment inquiry. I think the president is a danger to our democracy, to the way we talk to each other, to the way that power is distributed in this country. And I'm very, I'm very supportive of what the House Democrats are doing. I would hope the Republicans would stand up and recognize the danger that Donald Trump poses to all of us. It is also striking, Ambassador, that President Trump is explicitly acknowledging, and in some instances, as Kristen pointed out, bringing up unprompted what he wants these other foreign governments to do. This is not a situation Openly. where we're relying on unnamed sources or anonymous sources here, as sometimes has to happen. This is the president saying it out loud to everybody. Openly. You know, it may be. It may be that there already have been conversations between people close to Donald Trump and the Chinese government. Why else would the president bring this up unprompted today in that press conference? Maybe he's covering his tracks. Anything is possible with this president. I think that's what we've learned in the past uh, 
two and three quarter years since he took the oath of office. And this is a corruption of the way we've always followed the law in this country. For the president to be the chief instigator of corruption is unprecedented in our history. This is way beyond Watergate. <laughs> this is way beyond Andrew Johnson uh, in 1868. If you think about the previous times in American history when presidents have been called up to be impeached by the House of Representatives, the Senate is going to have to take up its responsibilities as well. And I think Republicans are going to have to face a moment of truth to see this outright corruption from the Oval Office. Ambassador and Chris, I'm going to ask you both to stand by because I want to bring in NBC News national political reporter Josh Letterman from here in our Washington bureau. Josh, you have had a lot of interactions with the Biden campaign. You've been reporting on what's happening inside the campaign. The president responded to a moment overnight from the former vice president when he was at an event. I want to play very quickly what the former VP had to say, and then we'll talk about the president's response. Let me make something clear to Mr. Trump and his hatchet man and the special interest funding his attacks against me, I'm not going anywhere. You're not going to destroy me, and you're not going to destroy my family. I don't care how much money you spend, Mr. President, or how dirty the attacks get. Josh, this is some of the strongest language that we've heard from the former vice president yet against President Trump. You have to imagine that after the allegations and claims that President Trump pushed today, uh, we are going to hear more of that from the former VP. Absolutely, but I think the question is whether the vice president is going to address any of the underlying claims as opposed to just pushing back and saying, you know, you shouldn't be going after my family and I'm not going to take it. So far, we haven't heard the vice president uh, discuss what uh, basically the president is saying happened as far as his uh, son's business interests in China that overlapped with the vice president uh, being in China, working with China on key national security issues. Uh, but fundamentally here, Hallie, there seems to be a difference of opinion between the president and Congress over whether this kind of conduct, asking a foreign government for help in investigating your political opponents, is problematic or acceptable. The president apparently thinks that that is either behavior that is legal or at least is going to be tolerable to the American electorate because he's saying it on national television. Congress, at least as far as the Democrats who control the House, clearly have a different point of view about that, and that's why uh, it's looking more and more likely that they will vote to impeach him. Chris and Walker, I want to go back to you because this is something we know uh, that the White House is sort of scrambling to figure out a strategy on how the president handles this impeachment inquiry. Uh, our sources have talked to us about what's sort of happening behind the scenes in the West Wing. Talk through a little bit how you think today and the president's very public announcement here plays into that. Well, I think what you saw yesterday and today, Hallie, is President Trump doing what he feels he does best, which is serving as his own communications director. The question is, and the question for some of his outside allies is, is this going to be effective when he is facing an impeachment inquiry? Inside Trump world, I think there are a lot of divisions about that, Hallie. You have those who want there to be an all-hands-on-deck approach. They want there to be a more robust response coming not only from President Trump, but from his communications team, his legal staff, and then there are others who want essentially this to be business as usual. So I think you're seeing both of those sides play out inside Trump world. We know that there have been policy meetings, as there always are, at the White House, and this undoubtedly at the forefront of those meetings, Hallie. Let's put a little bit more, Kristen, of what the president had to say about the Bidens on the South Lawn here. I would think that if they were honest about it, they'd start a major investigation into the Bidens. It's a very simple answer. Likewise, China should start an investigation into the Bidens. Because what happened in China is just about as bad as what happened with, uh, with Ukraine. And again, the, the sort of context and reality check here, the allegations that the president has made against Hunter Biden as it relates to his work in Ukraine linked to this Ukrainian energy company are unfounded. There has been no evidence against wrongdoing about the former vice president, uh, about Hunter Biden in that situation. And as for Hunter Biden's interactions with China, it is something the Biden campaign calls a conspiracy theory. Again, these questions that the president has raised have been debunked by fact checkers as the president makes these sort of 
what many call baseless claims against the Biden campaign. Baseless I know from claims. conversations with the Biden there, can prove it. is deeply frustrated that members of the media are even talking about the allegations against Hunter Biden in the first place just because President Trump is talking about it. Yet here he is now calling on not just one, but two foreign governments to investigate his rival. Right, uh, openly. He takes this as an indication that President Trump is scared, if you will, of Joe Biden beating him. Ambassador Burns, you alluded to that earlier in the conversation uh, about what this means sort of politically for President Trump domestically. I have to ask you, though, you've made very clear that you feel this is corruption at the highest level. What changes now do you think on the congressional side for this? Well, Congress has to pursue this, and, and it really should be um, Republicans and Democrats to? together, although it's hard, it's hard to see Republicans doing that. I just want to say, Hallie, I support Joe Biden for president. I'm an advisor, outside advisor to his campaign. He should not be on the defensive, be put on the defensive here by the press. He has responded to these charges, and they're pure fiction by the president of the United States. And there's no equivalency oh here. My the president God. of the United States just called on two governments to investigate one of his political opponents. That's corruption, and that distorts our democracy. It's going to distort our 2020 election unless we all speak out against it. Jeff Bennett is joining us again live from Capitol Hill. And Jeff, the House Democrats are already looking into what the president has suggested to the leader of Ukraine. Now you have the right. president in the last 30 minutes here suggesting another foreign government, President Xi of China, should also look into his political rival. How do you think this changes the game, if at all, for Democrats there? This, Hallie, is a question that I have had for Adam Schiff and I've not been able to ask him for at least the last two days. As this inquiry moves forward, if Democrats find more evidence of impeachable conduct, do they expand their inquiry and include that? Or do they stay focused on the specific issue of, of the president's uh, interactions with the Ukrainian leader that were outlined in that whistleblower complaint? That is an open question. I think, though, what is sort of instructive here is that Nancy Pelosi has said that the president's comments that exist already in the public record and that he's added to his attacks on the whistleblower, all of that, all add to the public case that Democrats are trying to build against President Trump, that the president has misused his public office, the office of the presidency, for personal political gain. Democrats see that as, as him undermining uh, national security and the integrity of our elections. So even if the president's comments just there in the South Lawn, if that does not work its way into a specific uh, uh, article of impeachment, you can bet that Democrats will use that to build the public case that they are making. Because remember, impeachment is a political remedy. It's not a legal one. So, so yes, I, I do expect that the president's comments there will work against him politically as Democrats uh, make this argument that he needs to be impeached. Jeff, I don't want to put you on the spot here. Have we heard from any members of Congress so far? And I know the president just spoke within the last 20, 30 minutes, so perhaps some of these lawmakers are still digesting this. But have you seen any tweets or got any statements on this so far? I'm curious. No, I haven't. And the lawmakers okay. who are here, because remember, this we're on a two-week recess, the right. lawmakers who are here who would normally talk about this kind of thing, Hallie, a lot of them, Democrat and Republican, are on the other side of Capitol Hill in that deposition meeting right now with Kurt Volker. So we saw walk into that room, Jamie Raskin, Eric Swalwell on the Democratic side. On the Republican side, you've got Mark Meadows, Jim Jordan, a, a few others. So I suspect Jordan and Swalwell, we expect them to talk to us after this, after the deposition wraps up. Uh, so we will definitely be putting questions to them about the president's latest comments. I bet. And Jeff, of course, the second that I asked you that question, two tweets popped up from two members there of Congress. Go. And I want to share a little bit of them from Congressman Tim Ryan, that President Trump, he says, just doesn't learn his lesson. It's illegal to pressure a foreign government to investigate a political rival. You also have from Sheila Jackson Lee that the president has now asked two countries, China and Ukraine, to investigate his lead political opponent. She continues, he's spreading lies about Joe Biden and denigrating a career American can diplomat to serve his own political ends. This is dangerous and concerning. So, Ambassador Burns, to your point, this has most certainly caught the attention of Democrats on the Hill. Well, it certainly has. And I think, you know, probably the key question for Democrats and Republicans to look at is, how is it possible that a private citizen, Rudy, Rudy Giuliani, hijacked our policy towards Ukraine? I mean, the exactly. big national security concern beyond the politics exactly. is that we've been trying to help Ukraine fend off Vladimir Putin, but all the Ukrainians heard over the last nine months from President Trump and Rudy Giuliani go after the Bidens. There was nothing about America's national security interests blocking Vladimir Putin. And this does get to the point, is the president putting 
his personal political interests in the 2020 election ahead of our country's national security. Sure he I think is. it's obvious that he's doing that. I'm just stunned that he would now call on China, the Chinese government, mm. a government that we do not trust, a government that lies, that's authoritarian, right. that doesn't wish us well. He calls on them to investigate a very distinguished former Vice President Joe Biden is mind-blowing. I thought that I'd heard it all now. Absolutely appalling that anybody would have said that, even if it was the truth, it should be handled in a different format. The dynamics has just went from severe to severer pertaining to our chief and commander that is basically loose lips, sink ships, is on some sort of a, I don't know if you'd call it a suicide, suicide dilemma, a reckless dilemma. Uh, it's become beyond careless. It's become beyond reckless. This is the President of the United States of the free world that is responding and reacting this way. It may be time to engage in some sort of a medical emergency pertaining to him not thinking correctly. It may be time to involve some sort of psychiatric evaluation or something. I don't know. But this uh, this is sickening. It's very, very disturbing. Dear God, have mercy on us as Americans. Have mercy upon us as Americans. Stunning. It's a political mistake for the president to do it, but it's, it, more importantly, it's legally and morally wrong for the president to do this. That has to be now the centerpiece of the House inquiry on impeachment. Kristen, I'll give you the last word here with just about a minute left in the show. President Trump, uh, we know, says things at times that don't comport with the strategy that White House aides and officials would perhaps Sometimes. want him to do. But there may be some thinking that by getting this into the open, by the president very openly calling on these two countries to investigate a political rival, is it possible the president is trying to inure his base, in a way, from any surprises down the road to get this out here kind of early before the election? I'm spitballing here, but I wonder if that's at all part of the thinking. The president is cracking up. He is becoming mentally psychologically, emotionally, chemically unbalanced. I don't know if it's because of his age. I don't know if it's somebody has slipped him a mickey. I don't know if this has been an ongoing disease that we have seen escalate in front of our very eyes. But the fact of the matter is, this is unethical and on professional to do this especially openly in front of all those cameras in front of God and everybody please we knew that he was a loose cannon before we ever elected him or before he ever become president but now he's not just a loose cannon he is the cannon please Somebody Well, I think it's a smart point and it's actually exactly where I was going, Hallie, which is that it's a tactic 
that we've seen from President Trump before. When he's in battle, when he's under fire, he sort of says the thing that he's getting pressure for to essentially try to defuse it. And again, it speaks to that question, will his old playbook work now that he is dealing with this impeachment inquiry, which is undoubtedly the biggest threat to his presidency since he has taken office? We saw yes. him do this during the Mueller investigation. Yeah. Will it right. work this time? That's the question. Chris, I'm going to have to let you go. I want to thank Josh Letterman, Jeff Bennett, Ambassador Nick Burns. It has been a very busy 40 minutes and a very significant 40 minutes as well with a lot of fallout to follow. I'm heading over to the White House. Don't forget, we will see the president again later this afternoon in Florida, but also when he gets back to the White House later this evening. You know we'll be out there trying to get more info from him. Right now, more news with my colleague Chris Jansing in New York. Uh, and Chris, what a morning it's been. Significant is the right word, Hallie Jackson. I know you have a long day ahead of you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Chris Jansing in for Craig Melvin here at MSNBC headquarters in New York. Out in the open, just moments ago, President Trump calling on another country to investigate the Bidens as he lashes out yet again, attacking his political rivals. This is another dramatic day unfolds on Capitol Hill with a key figure at the center of the Ukraine scandal set to appear behind closed doors just days after his abrupt resignation. Plus, the president's TV lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, and his reported prison contact. Medical emergency. The guy's having a nervous breakdown right in front of our very eyes. Something is going on with him in his mind and with his advisors towards him not paying attention to the severity of all this. This is really, really overwhelming. It's sad. It really is. It's sad because it's almost like this guy is trying to self-destruct and he's trying to self-destruct not only himself but he's trying to destruct the country please in his effort to undermine the reason for the Mueller investigation and an ominous sign for the president and his re-election campaign polls show more Americans supporting the impeachment inquiry it's also revealing some troubling signs among voters he needs to win back the White House but in the last 30 minutes or so, this is just breaking. President Trump leaving the White House, calling on two different foreign governments to investigate his political rival, Joe Biden. China should start an investigation into the Biden. Because what happened in China is just about as bad as what happened with, uh, with Ukraine. So I would say that President Zelensky if it were me, I would recommend that they start an investigation into the Bidens because nobody has any doubt that they weren't crooked. He needs to be admitted. He needs to be admitted in the psychiatric ward. He's having a nervous breakdown. The professional medical psychiatric community needs to step in before more damage is done. We've never seen a loose cannon this loose. I've never seen, we've never seen these type of dangers, these type of red flags that are flying up. Just like some of the statements that he made about the whistleblower and basically going to put out a bounty on this whistleblower. Um, you know, if you don't understand the rules and the regulations towards becoming president, then you really don't have no business becoming president. And these are violating all rules, all ethnic rules, pertaining to what he's doing right now. Oh my God. So President Trump right there, essentially describing out loud the precise accusation Congress is investigating behind closed doors at this minute. Right. It unfolds as a key player, central to this impeachment inquiry, the former U.S. Special Envoy to Ukraine, Kurt Volker, is being deposed by House lawmakers and their staff. We have got a lot to talk about this hour, so let's go right to Washington, where we find NBC News White House correspondent Peter Alexander on the North Lawn. NBC's Jeff Bennett is on Capitol Hill. Peter, you were with the president as he left. You heard him make this ask. Give us your analysis of this and a little bit more about what he said. He's cracking yeah, up. Let's put this in very simple terms for, for people right now. President Trump 
is now publicly calling for foreign leaders to investigate Joe Biden amid an impeachment inquiry into whether President Trump privately urged a foreign leader to investigate Joe He's Biden. going a wall about Ukraine <coughs> and as we have been discussing here he said out loud that he believes that Ukraine what he wanted them to do and wants them to do is to launch a quote major investigation into the Bidens then unprompted he raised his desire for China also to investigate Joe and Hunter Biden here, which is significant for a variety of reasons, not the least of which right now is the fact that this president, this White House, is tied up with a major negotiation with China, this trade war currently in place, and the president effectively said to the Chinese, if you are listening, that he would like from them to see them investigate the Bidens. The bottom line is that on Ukraine, the investigation was focused on whether or not the quid pro quo was that he was withholding. Is that kind of like Russia, if you're listening, if you can find Hillary Clinton's emails, <coughs> would you please distribute them openly and publicly before the world? Is this one of those same type of deals? I mean, I'm just asking. I don't know. <coughs> military aid to that country unless they investigated the Bidens. Here, many analysts, critics of the president, suggest that he's actually <coughs> saying, hey, our negotiations could in some form be dependent on you doing what I'm requesting of you, which is to investigate the Bidens. He was asked specifically as a follow-up later in the course of um, that back and forth with President Trump on the South Lawn, whether he has asked President Xi directly. He says that he has not to this point, but Chris, it really- He don't have to whenever he's standing on national stage talking on the big mic. You don't think that them people have already done heard this? Sure they have. Especially going on with the stuff going on over there that's going on right now. They're listening to everything, every kind of comment. Lord, Lord, Lord. Talk about a national security threat. This pretty well tops it. We as American citizens, regardless whether we are patriots or not, have a responsibility of protecting and taking care of our own. Regardless whether you have sworn an allegiance to the safety and the security of the American people as far as upholding the Constitution or not. Under the Good Samaritan Law, as a citizen of this country, we are held to the highest standards to protect our well-being. And whenever we have loose lips that are sinking ships, somebody needs to step in, even if it's the psychiatric community, and say, hold it, there's something going on here with this man that deems emergency uh, evaluation or emergency whatever towards looking into this because we've got almost 400 million lives here in the United States that is at stake here. Come on, folks. There is such thing as a red line. And whenever you continue to cross that red line, there is a problem. Something is going on with this guy. I don't know what it is. You know, at, at first I thought it was old school. At first, I wanted to, to say, well, it's just the fact that he's not a professional politician. You know, trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. But whenever you openly say these things in front of all these cameras on the big stage, you have to take these things serious. Secret Service, if you're listening, take these things serious, please. It was dramatic because the president had appeared 
in recent days has kind of gotten some traction, at least for this argument, as he tried to suggest it, that Adam Schiff was shifty, as he likes to say, even treasonous. The focus had been on House Democrats, on Adam Schiff, more than Nancy Pelosi, frankly, specifically. But in the course of the last hour here, we saw the president reignite a new Unhinged. storm by now saying publicly that he wants both Ukraine and China, those foreign governments, to investigate his leading political opponent. We cannot emphasize that enough. And Jeff Bennett, so this changes the equation in many ways. You have Kurt, you have a, a Volcker behind closed doors, right? Right. But you can imagine what's going on. This changes the dynamics completely to the point that I think an emergency uh, evaluation needs to be done on this guy. This changes all the dynamics. All the dynamics. As those same House Democrats learn behind closed doors about what the president just said. You're certainly right about that, Chris. And this deposition is now entering its second hour. And I talked to people who know Kurt Volker. They're familiar with his thinking. They're familiar with the role that he had when he was the U.S. envoy to Ukraine. He was appointed, tapped by Rex Tillerson, the former Secretary of State in 2017. And he held that position, Chris, until last Friday when the whistleblower complaint was made public. And Volker resigned, we're told, in part because he wanted to be more free in what he could tell members of Congress. And whereas Rudy Giuliani, the president's outside attorney, has tried to paint Kurt Volker as an accessory to Giuliani's own pressure campaign as he tried to encourage the Ukrainian leader to dig up discredited dirt on, on Joe Biden, Volker, I'm told, is telling these lawmakers, telling these congressional staffers who are handling the deposition, that that was not the case. Volker maintains that he had no role in the decision to hold up Ukrainian military aid, and that, in fact, he told Ukrainian leaders not to get involved in the U.S. 2020 election. And if Rudy Giuliani believes he had any direction, any, any guidance from the State Department, specifically from Volker himself, it was really that Volker saw him, saw him, meaning Rudy Giuliani, as a problem and was trying to table his effort, trying to end it as, as quickly as he could. It's also worth noting that Volker, when he was the U.S. envoy uh, to Ukraine, he had that job on a part-time basis. It was voluntary. His full-time job is being the executive director of the McCain Institute. And I'm also told that he was an ally and protege of John McCain and is not seen as a Trump person, has no particular affinity or closeness to uh, President Trump, and that the case he's making in this deposition right now is not beneficial to President Trump's bottom line politically. And now that it is 11.06, at 11.05, I can tell you that NBC News was given this first from, this, from the office of uh, House Majority or House Republican Leader Kevin McCarthy. He wrote a letter to Nancy Pelosi urging her to stop the impeachment inquiry. He says that uh, she does not have sufficient legitimacy to bring forward an articles of impeachment or to even carry out this inquiry process. And some of it I'll read for you now. It says this. Unfortunately, you have given no clear indication as to how your impeachment inquiry will proceed, including whether key historical precedents or basic standards of due process will be observed. So this is the latest effort from House Republicans to call into question the ongoing impeachment inquiry, the formal impeachment inquiry that Nancy Pelosi announced uh, last week, Chris. All right, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But Peter, the president's comments this morning of course, come on the heels of those two public events yesterday. Just got through putting a cherry on top pertaining to having him under an inquiry. An inquiry pertaining to investigating what he's up to and what he's saying. Loose lips sink ships. This guy is off the hinges. He is out of control. Now the next question is this, is Homeland Security, is the rest of these agencies going to set back and let him continue to tear up, shamble, hurt, harm the American credibility pertaining to our policies and who we are and what we are? I've never seen nothing like this. This is this is mind-boggling to me. This is disturbing. He went after Democrats in the media repeatedly. He continued to make false and unproven claims. Let me play just a few clips from what we heard yesterday. 
I saw Schiff trying to go 15, you know, call him Shifty Schiff. We don't call him Shifty Schiff for nothing. He's a shifty, dishonest guy. Biden and his son are stone cold crooked. And you know it. Nancy Pelosi hands out subpoenas like, you know, she has to approve it. She hands out subpoenas like they're cookies. You want a subpoena? Here you go, take them, like they're cookies. There's an expression, he couldn't carry his blank strap. I won't say it because they'll say it was so terrible to say. Are you talking to me? Yeah, it was just a follow up of what I just asked listen, you, sir. Listen, you ready? We have the president of Finland, ask him a question. I so add to that, again, the president just a short time ago, essentially making the Democrats own argument about courting interference do White House staff that you talk to, Peter, and I know you talk to them every day, multiple times a day, do they still believe he is his own best spokesperson or is nervousness growing? Well, frankly, it doesn't matter, I think, if they believe he is or isn't his best spokesperson. He's clearly going to be his own spokesperson going forward as evidenced by what we saw yesterday. It was remarkable to see a visibly angry President Trump in the Oval Office. I wasn't in there, but one of the photographers who was in the front row came out and immediately came to me and said, honestly, I've never seen him like this before. But there was another moment where we witnessed it. He's coming on hands. With the Finnish president later in the day. You can imagine the conversation the Finnish delegation is having today based on their experiences here at the White House. In my conversations with this White House right now, there is a real sense of frustration among those frustration. Of president Trump that this strategy has not really been been made clear it's not exactly it's not a strategy you're not seeing many surrogates certainly not seeing republicans go out on the air and try to defend president this is all coming off of the of the the uh the cuff okay it's not a strategy it's never been a strategy i thought at first it was a strategy this isn't a strategy this is the words and and the uh um the approach of somebody that has lost it, in my opinion. And if I'm being disrespectful, I don't mean to be disrespectful to the position of the presidency. Not at all. But we must look through all of this and try to figure this out towards my God. Instead of this man helping us, in actuality, he's hurting us. And he's violating principle rules that have been established here in America now for, what, 240 years? Right at 240 years? Come on. Give me a break. What the heck is going on in your head and in your heart, Mr. President? It's sad. Kevin McCarthy was on 60 Minutes it's this sad. weekend. It did not go well from him. And given the fact that Congress is in recess, they're obviously not easy to track down in the hallways. But were they to be defending him fiercely, there would be plenty of cameras available to them to speak. That's not happening right now as they continue to watch what, what critics really describe as, as an unraveling of this president. Uh, to see him that angry publicly while he continues to repeat information that is factually inaccurate, lies on a regular basis, um, I think was striking, and certainly the fact that he came back out on the South Lawn and sort of continued with that line, and even, uh, I think, reignited it in an even bigger way by bringing China into this equation, right. will be something that people behind the closed doors, as I speak to them as soon as we hang, finish this conversation, I'm sure we'll be talking about today as well. Yeah, feel free to come back to us, Peter. Uh, Peter Alexander, Jeff Bennett, thanks to both of you. I want to bring in Peter Baker, Chief White House Correspondent for the New York Times, John Meacham, Pulitzer Prize winning presidential historian, Jake Sherman, senior writer for Politico. All three are MSNBC political analyst Peter Baker. So it is one thing to see what we saw yesterday. We know, and the Washington Post has kept great track of this, how often the president lies. He clearly was angry yesterday, as Peter pointed out. It is another thing altogether to do, would you agree, what he did this morning, saying publicly to China and Ukraine, start an investigation into my political rival. 
Yeah, you know, for two years on the during the Russia investigation, the president's mantra was no collusion, no collusion, meaning I didn't work with a foreign power to influence our domestic politics. Right. Now he's saying basically, so what? So what if I do? You know, that he's right. He's doubling down. Rubbing he's, our he's, nose he's in very it. Very much of defiant president you're seeing. He's, he's defiant of the Congress. He's saying that the uh, thing you're investigating, I don't think is such a big deal at all. In fact, I think I have not only the right to do it, I should do it. I have the right, I have the obligation to pursue corruption. As he, Being very belligerent. He puts it. What, of course, uh, the Congress would say is he's pursuing his political enemies using the power of his presidency to do so. Now, there, you know, no direct quid pro quo that he mentioned this morning, but he did happen to talk about the fact that they're about to have these t trade talks with China. In the context of the trade talks, he said, if they don't do what we want, we have great power over them. So the fact that he's calling on China now to investigate uh, the Bidens at the same time he's having these negotiations, which are of great consequence to the United States and its national interest, and obviously great consequence to China's national interest, uh, you know, further clouds that, uh, that picture. So I, he's, he's, I think what you see here is a defiant president. And uh, John Meacham, you and Peter were two of four authors on a book on impeachment, uh, which I went back to again yesterday. And it strikes me as I'm looking at this new statement we got from Kevin McCarthy, obviously a, a political statement that he's trying to put out there, we're fighting this. He says, unfortunately, you've given no indication about whether there are key historical precedents or basic standards of due process that will be observed. Help us to put what we've seen unfold over just the last 24 hours in any kind of historical context, John. Well, we have a rolling abuse of power unfolding on our television screens. Uh, at least Nixon did it behind closed doors and taped it. Uh, Trump has disintermediated uh, that as well. I, without being in any way partisan, it seems to me the question for those, including uh, Leader McCarthy, I haven't seen his, his letter, but uh, every Republican, every person who supports the president, I think has to answer the following question. And the answer can be whatever they want it to be, but at least they have to confront it. Is American sovereignty worth the un, the reflexive support of the president. That is, do you so want to support this man against all criticism, against all comers, that you're willing to live with a president who clearly believes that our sovereignty is the sovereignty of our elections, the integrity of our democracy, is basically for sale or rent depending on the political needs of his own at a given moment. And I think that this is, this is like the Ukrainian phone call, but he just did it in the driveway. Right. right? Because it was, you, you laid it out very well. He talks about the trade talks, and then a few seconds, I think, later, he says, I think they should open an investigation. Is that a quid pro quo? I'm sure we're gonna hear from the uh, Trump people that it's not, uh, that uh, people are overreacting, they're hyperventilating. Right. But there is a pattern here. Right. And I just think it requires an honest confrontation of the facts. And maybe, folks, maybe that 45% or whatever it is now that uh, opposes impeachment and tends to support the president no matter what, maybe their answer is, we don't care. Uh, we believe in this president. We don't like the alternatives. We believe socialists are coming over the wall. I mean, so maybe that's the answer. Yeah. But at least have... The, conf the, the moment of confrontation where you have to answer that question. Yeah, it's extraordinary. We don't need a Rosemary Woods, uh, who you all know was the no. secretary for Richard Nixon, and there are questions about missing parts of tape. He came out and spoke openly and clearly on television. Jake, you're the person, per perfect person to have to essentially answer the very important question that was just raised by John Meacham. Uh, we've talked a lot in the last couple of weeks as this has escalated, and one of the complaints of uh, it's unraveling is the swiftness at which this happens. I'm not sure uh, who he's blaming for that. I know he wants to blame, but uh, it is moving very swiftly. The question is, is this one of those points that might move some Republicans? It's a good question. Well, first of all, I, I, I'll disagree with McCarthy that it's moving quickly. I mean, it's not moving terribly quickly. The, they want to move, Democrats want he to move swiftly. He says swiftness and recklessness, that is what his letter says. 
Yeah, listen, Democrats certainly have political risk here, which would be not holding hearings and, and rushing this to the House mm -hmm. floor for a vote. We don't see that quite yet. Doesn't mean it can't happen and it won't happen, but we don't see that quite yet. <clears throat> I will answer John's question by saying yes. Republicans believe that with Donald Trump in office, they're... Have you ever thought that maybe Donald Trump is intentionally doing this? This is, I'm just throwing this out here now. But have you ever thought that he's intentionally doing this, knowing that he's going to feather the, the feathers uh, of various politicians to the point that they do wind up impeaching him? And his intent is actually to see this country get torn apart even further than what it already is towards the development of an actual civil war. Have you ever thought that? That this could be his mental strategy? And I know that he would never admit to that because he claims that everything he does, he does in the interest of the American people. But because certain things has come out in the past few days just like him making the statement that there would be a civil war infraction, infractionment. Something is telling me that something is already in his head leaning into the degree of a civil war for him to ever make a statement like that. Now, I'm just throwing this out there. I'm not supposed to be the, the sharpest knife in the drawer, uh, but I was, you know, at the same time, I realized that, you know, I was, I may not have been born... Uh, at night, but it for darn sure wasn't last night. But but something is developing here with this guy, and you have to be able to look through the smoke screen to say, what if this is and was his true motive? Because there's something going to develop out of all this, for the good or the bad. I don't know what it's going to be just yet, but there's something going to develop out of all this. And let's say that they did go ahead and pursue and succeed in having him impeached, basically uh, run out of office. Does he feel like that his followers, his support team, his fans, per se, would actually create an uprising to the point that there would actually be a civil war disturbance that would occur here in America. I don't know. I'm just throwing this out there. I'm looking at all the options right now because this is serious. This is really, really horribly, horribly serious. Only option is to lock themselves to the president, defend him, and until the proverbial death, because they believe that that's where their base is, and they might be right, and they do not believe that these are impeachable offenses on the substance. I, I don't know whether they believe that, but that's what they say. Now, impeachable offenses is in the eye of the beholder, right? I mean, there is no definition besides high crimes and misdemeanors. So it is up to the Congress, to the House, to decide what is impeachable. And uh, that's, that Democrats are in the process of doing that. I guess there is a sliver of a chance they do not write up impeachment articles if they don't find what they expect that they will find. But if you talk You have to digest all of this to be able to look through it. And the fact of the matter is he already knew that he was being shunned, chastised, penalized, basically punished openly uh, for saying what he said to the Ukrainian president pertaining to investigating uh, one of his uh, opponents. And now he's done it openly again pertaining to China. Come on. It's self-explanatory what's going on here. Don't you think? Don't you think? Talk to most Democrats, they will say what Trump has said in the open, things like he has said today on his way to the helicopter, is mind-blowing. Things that he said in, on that phone call, his admission that of all the things that he's done, those are impeachable enough without any other evidence. Self-explanatory. So I guess the answer to John's question is yes. 
Republicans are going to defend him. They believe that they can win back the House by defending him. The NRCC put out polling today that shows swing districts are wary of the impeachment push and believe that Democrats are too focused on impeachment. Most polls don't show that, but that's certainly what House Republicans believe, and that's the political reality we are working with on Capitol Hill. It's sad. One of the things um, it's that sad. we heard, Peter, uh, from Nancy Pelosi when she was reluctant to move forward with impeachment is she wanted to make sure she had the American people behind her. And there's a new USA Today poll out this morning with Ipsos that shows a plurality of Americans now support impeaching President Trump, 45 to 38 percent. This follows a pattern, right, that we have been seeing over the last couple of weeks that public opinion is moving toward impeachment. How, if at all, does this affect whatever strategy the White House may have? And conversely, what does it mean for the Democrats? Yeah, it's obviously not good news for the White House because the argument they have had up until now, long before the Ukraine thing came up, was the public didn't want an impeachment and they had the polls to prove it. Uh, and that was no question a uh, factor in Nancy Pelosi's reluctance to move forward. They saw, she saw, she was a member of Congress in 1998 and 1999 when the House impeached President Clinton and the Senate acquitted him. The public wasn't for it. His approval ratings went up, not down during that. And they didn't want to, the Democrats this time didn't want to repeat what they thought was the bad experience the Republicans had in that impeachment effort. Now, the, the polls are moving a little bit, but they're moving in the sense that, you know, they're moving to, to the basic corners where everybody is already, uh, you know, sitting. In other words, it's the anti-Trump people who are coming out in favor of an impeachment inquiry or even impeachment itself. But we haven't seen that move beyond that same dynamic, the 45 to 38 uh, you know, you split. soon the will. The country has been on Trump all along. In fact, there's been a larger percentage of people who disapprove of Trump's uh, uh, performance in office than 45%. So they haven't even yet gotten the full anti Trump electorate part behind the impeachment effort. So it's a real risk for them. The, 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 the calculation that Nancy Pelosi made earlier in the year was the House could impeach him on a party line vote, and the Senate would acquit him, and the president would then go out to the campaign trail and say, see, I was acquitted by the Senate, and use that as an as a effective uh, electioneer, uh, electioneering argument. That still hasn't changed. It's very likely the Senate would acquit him even if the House does impeach him, and that would be not the now. verdict from Congress the president would take to the campaign. Not trail. now they're not. Not now they're not. Now the dynamics has changed. I want to bring this out to my viewers, which I think is worth noting. Mr. Obama, our first time black president, there's no doubt that he, his administration made some big mistakes in what they tried to achieve, especially over with Iran. Um, Mr. Obama, after the occurrence took place in South Carolina, almost took a part in starting a civil war right here in the United States as far as I'm concerned, especially whenever they decided to ban all Confederate flags and even Walmart and places like that refused to sell them at that point in time. They basically outlawed the Southern Confederate heritage at that point in time. Okay? Just because of one idiot uh, that went into a church and killed a bunch of people. But Mr. Obama, in his presidency, received more death threats than any other president in the United States of America since America has been created in the past 239, 240 years. I was told, which serves a purpose of being right, that the reason why that they would not impeach or do away with Obama's presidency was because the White House, as well as the Hill, was scared that if they did, that it would start an uprising that would basically boil into a civil war. And that's the reason why that they kept him in check and in balance there in the White House. Do you not think that Donald Trump already is aware of those facts? Sure he is. That's the reason why that I'm saying what I'm saying, in which I'm fixing to end this. Um, Trump publicly urges another foreign government to investigate the Bidens. Um, there has to be 
Forever action is a reaction. Forever action is a reaction, and we know that. Um, who was it? New Newton's law that said whatever can happen will happen? There has to be a reason why Donald Trump is push, pushing this envelope the way that he's pushing it towards basically pointing his finger in certain people's chest and saying, I dare you, I dare you, I dare you, go ahead, cut me loose, cut me loose. There has to be a strategy in behind this. And that's the reason why that I'm bringing up the fact that his strategy may very well may be to cut this country completely in half by bringing us apart rather than bringing us together. And it's only a speculation, and I realize it's only a speculation, but at this point in time, one has to start looking at drawing straws from the inedible that are beyond the normalcy of despair. Thanks again for allowing for me to speak on my YouTube uh, platform. Good luck to all of us, and shalom to each and every one of us.